Y'all live. Y'all live. Anything you do or say. <laughs> That's okay. They the one. They know you the one that do too much. Right. So oh, go on, step back. They don't know me. Yes, they do. You on the camera like this. Tell the world. Which like down that street there? This street there that we came in on, so you go underneath the highway. And go on, okay, 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 I know where it's at. I know where it's at. Uh, you want me to go with you? Just no. like no. extra protection. I'm trying to turn this around or something. Shoot. Sure. Right. Give me these. You sure you sure? Okay, I'm going to turn that sign. Sure. You know, because y'all kind of, oh yeah, man. Where we going to be standing at? On the hill? Most likely. It don't matter, I don't know. Nah, that'll wear you out, man. You might stand right there. Yeah. Speaker up front then. What was that, Shane? You got to do everything? <laughs> This is the book of John, chapter 8, and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we the brothers from the General Assembly. And what we out here to do is we out here to give the black and Hispanics the truth. And the truth is the fact that we are the Israelites. We are God's chosen people. We're not African American. We're not Mexican. We're not Jamaican. We're not Haitian. We are God's chosen people, and being God's chosen people, we got a responsibility, and that's to keep the commandments. Because when we keep the commandments, there's power that the Most High God, who is our power, He stands up, He stands up for us, and He allows us to be successful here on this earth. Let's get uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 33. So the truth is that we got to be different. We got to be different from all the things that we see. We got to be different from the experiences that we got from our parents, from our uncles, our aunts. And we got to transform our mind to what the scriptures say and not transform our minds to the lies and the examples that were set for us, which was bad examples. So this is 2 Chronicles chapter 30, chapter 30. And we'll start at verse 7. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 30 and verse 7. And be not ye like your fathers. You see that, so the most side, the truth is we can't be like our fathers. Because what was the condition of our fathers? A lot of us brothers and sisters and sons and daughters, we are products of single parent households. And the reason, the example, you can slide down. No, this one. Of single parent households, it came from fornication. And it came from adultery. It came from our fathers trying to be players, and every piece of tail they saw, they felt like they had to have. So the Most High is coming out to give us the truth, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. Let's get that in Psalm chapter 119 and verse 151. Let's see what the truth is, because the Most High God sent us out here to give His people, whom you happen to be, the truth. It's so Psalm chapter 119 and verse 151. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. You see that? It says, Thou art near. This is King David. You can step down here. This is King David. That's fine. King David, who was a black man, who was an Israelite of the tribe of Judah, one of the greatest kings on the earth next to his son Solomon. 
So he said, thou art near, O God. So he understood that the God that created the heaven and earth, he's in our lives. He sees everything that we do. And the thing that he's telling to us, he said, all the commandments are truth. So the commandments is the true understanding that we got to come to. The commandments is what we have to acknowledge, which is righteousness. Because the commandments are true. So when we come out here to tell his, the God's people who you are, the Israelites, but we calling ourselves by the black and Hispanics, the most I said, we don't know the truth. Meaning we have to learn the commandments, and when we know the truth, it's going to set us free. What do we need to be set free from? All the sins and wickedness and evil habits that we have in the earth. But where do we get these habits from? We got them from our parents. So the Most High, now we got King Solomon. You got the brothers in the Chronicles. They said, be not ye like your fathers. So all the bad examples that our fathers set, we got to be stronger than that. And we got to come to the, what thus says the Lord, to the truth, to denounce and do away with all those habits that we learn. Go ahead, read it from the top. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 30 and verse 7. And be not ye like your fathers, and like your brethren, which trespass against the Lord God of their fathers. So what is it when we trespass against the Lord God of our fathers? Let's get 1 John chapter 3 and 4. What is the trespass is talking about? Because when we read the Bible, now we got to give you the understanding of what it's saying, and you not just think it's just words on the page. But the most I sent us to open up your understanding so you can understand the scriptures, which is your heritage, which is what's going to lead you to prosperity and a kingdom that's going to come. So this is 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Right, so it says when we transgress, the action of transgressing, the Bible calls it sin. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression, meaning the going get against of the law. So the Most High said we can't be like our fathers and our brethren who trespass, who sin, meaning they broke the law. Go ahead. Who therefore gave them up to desolation. You see that? And in doing so, God gave us up to desolation. What's some of the desolation we can bring to mind? Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, and it should be verse 41. So that we can see that this Bible is a true book. Because this Bible foretold everything. You get it, Deuteronomy 28. Because this Bible is foretells our lives. And it is actually a lively book. Because everything that's happening to us today... The Bible foretold what was going to happen, and it explains why we're in the condition that we're in. So some of the desolations that our forefathers fell under, that we fall under, is right here. Check this out. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 41. Thou shalt begot sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. You see the end this happened. Our great-grandparents had sons and daughters born unto them, but what happened to them sons and daughters? They was carried off on the wagon. They went into captivity. So this is true, the black and Hispanics, who the Bible called the Israelites, because that's who we are. We are the Israelites, we God's chosen people, and the captivity happened because of, right there, a lion. But the captivity happened because of disobedience. So the Most High is showing us not to be like our fathers, because he brought desolation upon them. And the desolation happened because of transgression. And what is transgression? Transgression, the Bible calls it sin. Meaning break the breaking of God's commandments, the breaking of his laws. But now the Most High is sending us out. He's giving us the truth. Which is bringing us back to the commandments. Because according to Psalms chapter 119 and 151, the commandments are truth. So the commandments is the way that we come out of the condition that we in. And we talking about some of the desolations that falls upon our people because of disobedience. Let's jump over to, let's jump over to verse 65, uh, 64. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. 
and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So this is another desolation that fell upon the black and the Spanish. Desolation is a word that means destruction. So one of the destructions that happened to the black and Hispanics is we was what? Scattered thee among all people. The Most High took us out of our land, which is the greatest land on the face of the earth, and the other nations are still fighting over that land today because they know it's the best land on the earth. So the Most High, one of the desolations, he took us out of our land and scattered us among all nations. And how did these nations feel about us? They had, they bore deadly hate. And they still bear the deadly hate. That's why we being gunned down in the streets by the Europeans. That's why the Chinese, they ain't innocent because they feed you rats and dogs. They feed you poison. So all nations hate you. The herbs, they sleeping with your women. They, they tell you, they, they a bit, uh, overpricing you, overcharging you to get around by selling you gas at three dollars a, a, a gallon? Knowing that we poor, knowing that we barely making it, and they set up all these shops in our neighborhoods, taking the last little bit of change that we got, and then take that last little bit of change and hit the highway and drive home. They don't put that money back in your community. They just coming to get their part. They coming to get their peace and leaving you desolate. The Most High said he would scatter us among all nations. We got to understand that this is a curse. This is the land of our captivity. This is not the land of the free. Because we ain't free. We still servants today. We still got to get up and work as a wage slave. And as they pay you at the end of the week, they come and take it all back with utilities, all back. with taxation, yeah. with overpriced food, that the labels, they just change because it's really spoiled and overdue. It should come off the shelves. So you see how the Most High, he said, desolations will happen unto us. It happened because of disobedience. So if we want anything to change, then we got to change from being disobedient to obedient. Come out the street, brother. The bus coming. So. It says, the Lord will scatter us among all nations. Go ahead. From the one I end of the earth. Uh, from one end of the earth. Because the black and Hispanics, we not just live in America. We all over to the four corners of the earth. We in London. We in Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia. We in Mexico. We in the islands. We, we border the seas. The black and Hispanics. Step up. So to the black and Hispanics, we all over the world, the Most High said he would take us from the greatest land known to man, which is the land of Jerusalem, which is the motherland, because Africa is not the motherland. Africa is the name of a Roman general, and we ain't Roman. If somebody came here and told us that our daddy was white, we would, we would go to hell and back to prove that he's not. So why are we calling ourselves Africans? Calling ourselves after the name of a Roman, a European. We got to come to the truth because everybody all, all, everybody that can hear my voice, we all know that the I real Jews you. are black. I hear you. And if we I know that the real Jews are black, I then we got to understand that we the Jews. But we got to do more than know that the Jews are black. We got to put on our heritage and come back to what's written. You got something? We got to come back to what's written because the Bible is our history book. It's our heritage. It tells us when we reigned as kings and queens, and it tells us when we became the scum of the earth and how we got there. But it also, it tells us how to get back to our greatness, and that's at the keeping of the commandments. So we go through some of the desolations that fall upon our people so that we can understand that these things are happening to us. And the evidence of it is written in our holy scriptures. Go ahead. Even unto the other. And there shalt thou serve other gods. And when we got to these other nations, it's something terrible that happened. It says there when we got to the land of our captivity, so everybody acknowledged that America is the land of our captivity, what would happen when we got here? Go ahead. We would do what? Serve other gods. The Bible said we would serve other gods. So what other gods are we serving today? How about Christianity? 
Christianity is not even in the Bible. Christianity teach you to break God's commandments and God all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelations tell you to keep his commandments. So here in the land of our captivity, we were indoctrinated with false gods, false religion, because religion is a Greek word, not a Hebrew word. And this is the Hebrew scriptures because God didn't give us religion. What did God give us? Let's get uh, Nehemiah chapter 9. Let's see what our God, the God that created the sun that we see, the sun that's making it hot, the wind that's running past our flesh, the God that created the heaven and the earth, what did he give to you black and Hispanics? Nehemiah chapter 9, and it should be verse 13. Uh, Verse 12. This is Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 12. Moreover, Thou us them in the day by a cloudy pillar. So we just mentioned about the sun, right? So when it's sunny and it's hot outside, what we looking for? We looking for shade, ain't we? So the Most High, when he brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt, he led us by the day in the pillar of cloud, a protector. He didn't leave us. Go ahead. And in the night by a pillar of fire and in the night at by a pillar of fire he always left us a way to see and he guided us and protected us go ahead to give them light in the way wherein they should go you see that it says to give us light in the way wherein we should go but what did that light truly represent what is it what does the light truly represent that the most high gave to the israelites Let's get it, uh, pro- hold that and get Proverbs 6. Let's see what the light is that the Most High gave to our forefathers to lead them in the way where they would go. Because we was not the only nation on the face of the earth. We had other nations and they had ways of living. They had ways that they did things. But the Most High gave us a light to be able to discern amongst our walk, our life, What's good and bad. So this is Proverbs chapter 6, and we'll read verse 23. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. It says, for the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. So what light did the Most High give to our forefathers? He gave us the laws. And those laws were supposed to lead and guide us leading God our forefathers through that wilderness that they lived in and that they walked through. So now the land of America is our wilderness in our time. Just because you got buildings made of concrete don't mean it's in the wilderness. Because right, before these right. buildings was here, right, right, it was just right, land. Right, it was right. just our uh, forestry. Right. So now in our life, in our wilderness, the Most High is waking us up to the truth by giving us the same laws that he gave to our forefathers to lead them. So let's go back to Nehemiah chapter 9. Okay. And pick up from where you left off. Uh, To give them light in the way wherein they should go. Uh Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai. So now the Most High God himself came down upon Mount Sinai. And upon Mount Sinai, you had the... Uh, the mountain is smoked with fire all the way up to the heavens. That was the presence of your God. And when he came down, he actually spoke. And the thing that he spoke and the thing that he gave them is this here. Go ahead. And spake is with them from heaven and gave us them right judgment. And gave us them right judgment. You know what a right judgment is? Well, what is it? That a man, he should stay at home and take care of his wife and his children. Because if he, if, then when you read Timothy 5, it says a man that will not take care of his own, he is worse than an infidel. An infidel is a non-believer. That's a right judgment for a man to take care of his wife and to teach his children. What is another right judgment? That if a man has a woman, you shouldn't be gazing upon his woman trying to get in her ear. So the Most High gave us right judgments. Go ahead. And true law. And true laws. What does it say? He gave us religion. Because God didn't give us religion. He gave us laws, statutes, commandments, and precepts. So all the religions that's now in the earth, they are false and was not given us to our God. Because we reading about the desolations that's happened to the Israelites. And what is it, is it more there? Go ahead. 
good statue. Good statues. The statues good is statue. a dwelling point inside good the statue. law to where this is acceptable. And when you get to this, this is not acceptable. This is the breaking of the law. This is the keeping of the law. Go ahead. And commandments. And commandments. So this is what the Heavenly Father gave to the black and Hispanics. He didn't give you religion. Go ahead. And made is known unto them thy holy Sabbath. You see that? And then he made known unto us his high holy day. His high holy days. Not holidays. Holidays is where the so-called nations, they play war games. And instead of it being two separate words, they changed the Y from an I and made it one word. And then they added, they spin on the false gods of the earth. Because all holidays today worship false gods. But the God that created the heaven and the earth, he gave us his holy Sabbath. Go ahead. And commanded them precepts. And commanded us precepts, meaning words, instructions on how to perform his law. And words and instructions to do when the law is broken. And how to lead and guide in the understanding of the law. Go ahead. How to keep the Sabbath. And how to keep the Sabbath. Go ahead. Statues and laws by the hand of Moses. Like and who Sabbath. gave us these things? By the hand of Moses. By the hand of Moses. Moses was an Israelite of the tribe of Levi. He was one of the priests. So God never gave, told the other nations to teach us his laws, statutes, and commandments. He sent one of your brothers, one of your own, of the tribes of Israel to teach you. So when we get back to the desolations that the Most High God allowed us to go into, now we should understand why it's a desolation and how far we went off as a nation and why we destroyed. Because the Most High, he said, so now we're going to go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and we in verse 64, we reading about the desolations that fell upon us. Desolation is a word that means destruction. So one of the destructions is that when we were scattered, what would happen? Thou shalt serve other gods. We would serve other gods that was taught to us by non-Israelites. Because the Most High sent the Israelites, our brothers, to teach and lead and guide us. He didn't tell the other nations to give us nothing. But when we got scattered because of disobedience, because of rebellion, because we wanted nothing to do with what was right, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, the Most High allowed us to be taken from our land and taken captive into another land and then being given false gods. False gods. Let's get uh, Hosea, I think it's Hosea chapter 4, about um, a nation they could not save. Is it Hosea 4? Five and seventeen, or was it four and seventeen? Five and seventeen. Might be four. Cause look, we gonna find out about uh, Isaiah. Uh, Hosea five and about a nation that could not save. Right. Vain hopes is what what they call yeah. it. Isaiah. Because what we what we establishing is when we got these religions, we put all our trust in them. But we're putting our trust in them. It didn't it didn't profit us nor help us. So we'll, 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 we'll forsake it for now. So, so we was with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and we was at verse 64, the last precept. And what we was reading was about was that when we got to these other nations, that now they gave us religions and they indoctrinated us. Yeah, we can use that, that word. And, when, and what happened is when they gave us these religions, we put all our faith and all our time and energy in this religion, in these false gods. But And what was we looking for? We was looking for help. 
We was looking for some deliverance, but there was no deliverance because this was not the God of our forefathers, which is the God of the heaven and earth. So this is a desolation to be in Christianity, to be praying to a false image of the Christ, because when you read the Bible, Christ came out of the tribe of Judah. And the Judites were a nation, a tribe of color. Christ was not a European. But in Christianity, we pray to that Christ and we receive no help whatsoever. That's another doctrine that we was given, Islam. Islam has nothing to do with the black and Hispanics. That is the God of the Arabs. That's where your stone come in when it says a nation, we should serve wood and stone. The wood represents the cross. And we all wear the cross upon our neck and we kiss it and we pray to it but we go back and still have the same old destructive lives. We still have no help. We still in the same situation that we in. That is a desolation. Yeah. Because the Most High God, our God, He forsook us and He went back to His place because we didn't want to repent. We didn't want to turn. That was Isaiah 5, Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. We'll start at verse one. So this is what this is what's happening today in the land of our captivity with these false religions and these idols that we was made to serve, even wood and stone. Isaiah chapter thirty, and we'll we'll just jump to the point. We'll go to verse five. The book of Isaiah chapter thirty and verse five. They were all ashamed of a people. You see that? They were all ashamed of a people because this this religions, these religions, Christianity, Islam, Jehovah's Witness, which ain't no J even in the Hebrew language. So all these things that we worship and that we celebrate, they came from a nation of people. And those doctors are come from, they are tied to another nation of people. So in serving those gods, we look into that other nation. So now we're being confounded, now being in the desolations that we in, it says, read it from the top again. They were all ashamed. Now we all ashamed. We left with confusion and faith because if nothing has changed in our lives, we are still without help. Serving these gods of wood and stone given to us by the other nations. Now we left without nothing. We don't know what to do. That's the shame that we have. To where it's so bad to where now we don't even think that a God, that God exists. We think that God is non-existent. He's only non-existent because we're not keeping the commandments. So it says we were ashamed, go ahead, of a people that could not profit them. But the thing is, it says we was ashamed of a people that could not profit us. But the thing is, we still think that these are the nations of our profit. They for our return, they are for our benefit, that they love us, that they want what's best for us. The nations and their doctrines that they gave us is wickedness. And it's the reason that our God has returned to his place. This is part of the desolation that we have. And it started and it was given to us from our parents. That's why we read in Chronicles, it said not to be like our fathers. But we got to, who transgressed against the laws, statutes, and commandments of our God. And now we reaping the benefits of everything that they went through. Now it becomes our lives. To where we destroy, to where we follow in the gods of the other nations, which yet be no gods. Go ahead. Uh, Nor be it, uh -huh. nor be in help, nor profit, but a shame. And also a reproach. You see that the nations are a shame and a, re a reproach to us, meaning hatred. And they are not for a profit. They don't help us. All they do is tell you to come to church and pay your tithes because by paying tithes, you'll get into the kingdom of heaven when tithes was never even money. That's it there, yeah. That's it. Uh, you can, we'll get it. So now, the nations, they are lying to us because in Christianity... They teach you that the law is done away with, but they falsely tell you to pay tithes. So how does that line up? And then these the pastors that teach you the lies, they go back to their mansions and their million dollar neighborhoods and leave your gas cut off. 
but tell you to keep giving your that your ten percent. If they gave ten percent of what you giving them, they'll be able to furnish the communities. So where they where they money they giving, but ties was never money. Just showing you the lies that's being spewed out that come from the doctrine given to you by your oppressors. So we got to come out of these things because it is a shame and a reproach unto us, but we won't acknowledge it because we just looking for anything to follow. That's why we are ashamed. Because we have forgotten who we are as a people. And the Most High is trying to tell us this is a desolation. This is destruction to you. It's not peace. It's not love. It's destruction. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and let's get a uh, Lamentations 4, 17. Lamentations 4 and 17. As for us, our eyes as as yet fail for our vain help. You see that? Our eyes are failing us. We just don't know what to do. We got our heads down. We've given up hope because of our vain help. Why is the help vain? Vain means worthless. It means lies. Go ahead. In our watching, we have watched for a nation. We have watched for the nations that gave us these false gods. But what did these nations do? Go ahead. That could not save us. Because they won't save us. Our only deliverance is in the God of our fathers, the God of this Bible. And we got to come back to the God of this Bible and keep his commandments. Because outside of the commandments, we are being destroyed as we should be able to see today when we look into our communities. Let's read about another destruction that the Bible says would happen for the breaking of the laws. Go ahead to, back to Deuteronomy 28 and now 65. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 65. And amongst these nations shalt thou find no ease. And amongst these nations, we don't have no rest. We work and they work us until we in the grave. And now, now they keep increasing the what? Retirement age to where they tell you got to work even longer. You beat down at 30 and 40 years old and they tell you still show up to work. So amongst these nations, we don't have no ease. We are held back and it's um, things put in place to keep us down in everything we do. Why? Because of destruction. Go ahead. Neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. And that's what we have. We have a trembling heart. To where we shook our minds. A lot of our parents, they go crazy. They have strokes. They have aneurysms. All because of the trembling heart that the Father gave us because of disobedience. Go ahead. And failing of eyes. And failing of eyes. To where things just don't work out no matter how hard we try. And no matter what scheme or what route we take outside of the Bible, it all comes to naught. Because the Bible is the only route to success. Thus says the Lord. Go ahead. And sorrow of mine. And that and thy life shall hang in doubt. And that's what we see today. This is what we experience in today. You get you see flashing lights in the in the review mirror, now your life hanging doubt. You walking through the wrong neighborhood with the wrong color, now your life hanging down. You worry, am I gonna make it home? All these things are destruction to us that the Father has allowed to happen to us because we don't want to keep the commandments. When the Bible is being read and being taught, we turn the music up, or we roll the window up, or we ain't got time. When we go do something different because the life that we live in today it's not peace. It's not prosperity. It's destruction. And we're going to continue to downward spiral until we change. Or until the Christ come back and just do away with the ones that refuse to hearken. So these are desolations that's happening to us. All because of disobedience. And that disobedience came from our fathers. Let's go back to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 30 and verse pick up at verse 7. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 30 and verse 7. And be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren. 
which trespassed against the Lord of their father. You see that? So now we should see some of the things that happen because of trespassing against the laws of God. Destruction, desolation, being taken from your land, your children being taken from you, being fed false hopes and false lies of religion. And the greatest, your greatest king to ever walk the earth, which is the Christ, which is a man of color, to where they go and paint his image as a European. And they, they hide the information of who you are and they keep changing your names. So we got to change. We got to repent. We got to come back to thus says the Lord. Go ahead. Who therefore gave them up to desolation as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked. Now we got to stop being stiff-necked. Now we got to humble ourselves. But how do we humble ourselves? Let's get 1 Samuel 15. What is the humility that our God is looking for? Because we talking to you, black man. Black woman who is the Israelite man and Israelite woman. How does God want us to humble ourselves? What is the opposite of us being stiff-necked? It's this right here. This is... 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel. So Saul was the first king given to the Israelites of the tribe of Benjamin. And let's see what he said after he was stiff-necked. Go ahead. I have sinned. Saul said, I have sinned. So that's just, that is what our God wants to see in us. That's the start. He says, I have sinned. Go ahead. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. It says, I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. We got to acknowledge that. We got to acknowledge that we ain't keeping the Sabbath day. We got to acknowledge that we commit adultery because we looking at another man's wife. You don't have to have a ring on her finger. If that man and woman are dealing in a relationship, she's off the market. And sisters, so if you got a man, and you shouldn't be looking for a new man. So all these things was given to us by our parents. All these examples were set by our brothers. The most I said, the time is now to where we change and we stop being stiff-necked and now we acknowledge that we have sinned. It's more? And thy words, because I fear the people and obey their voice. You see that? And that's what we do. We got to come out of this fear that we have to where we fear what the people might say if we keep the commandments. If we be righteous, yes, sir. Yeah, just quick, a quick, quick point. A quick point when it said, and, and thy words. When it said, and thy words, it's talking about the words of Samuel. Because Saul admitted that he sinned against the, the, the Most High, and he transgressed. And he also said, I, he also transgressed the words of Samuel. So when, so when the prophets come out, the teachers come out and correct you, if you don't hearken and listen to that prophet and that teacher, you're in sin. It's called pride. See, because Samuel was teaching the commandments of the Lord, and Saul didn't obey the, his voice that the Most High told him to tell him. So. Right. Right, right. Because who was doing the teaching? Where is the Spirit of the Lord at? It's in your teachers. We got to stop dealing in that pride to where except God come down and tell us himself, we ain't gonna change. When we see God's face, it's gonna be destruction. So we ought to hearken to the prophets who have his spirit that's trying to warn us before we see the face of God. Because if, it's, if our lives don't line up with thus says the Lord in the scriptures, it's gonna be destruction. It ain't gonna be no explaining. It ain't gonna be time to talk in judgment day. It's either you did it or you did And if you did it, then you're going to inherit the kingdom and eternal life and infinite wealth. If you didn't, you're going to get the lake of fire. So we ought to listen to the prophets of the Father that's given us his words and speaking at his mouth. How you doing, sis? You got some time? Come get some of this knowledge. Oh, okay. Good try. Good, good, good. So... Good, so you know we Israel. You know we the Israelites. Cool, okay, so well with knowing we the Israelites, let me show you one thing to help to help flourish. First John. First John. Mm-hmm. 
Right, most definitely. And, and this is how, this is what helps the knowledge and the walk we have flourish. Because remember, the, and the example is, did Christ walk by himself? Was it one apostle or was it 12? It was 12. And with that 12, you had many different spirits and you had understandings that was given by the teaching of the Christ that helped each one of so that with it being 12 different apostles, you had so you can say that you had 12 different gifts. And with those 12 gifts, they did something to help each other other than Judas because we know Judas fell away because of covetousness. But the other 11, they remain because of this right here. So this is 1 John chapter 1 and verse 6. Five. The book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him. So now, so this is John, one of the uh, 12 disciples. And he's repeating to the Israelites the message that the Christ gave to him. And what helped him. And what helped the other brothers to stay on the journey. Because it's hard. Temptation is everywhere we look. It's every, almost on every thought. Of reminding ourselves of what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to be. So now it says this is the message which we have heard of him. To him is the Christ. Go ahead. And declare unto you. And now we tell it unto you. Go ahead. That God is light. And we understand that the Most High God is light. He is instruction. He is order. He is the law. Because he gave us the laws. Go ahead. And in him is no darkness at all. And in him it ain't no sin at all. Because a lot of people they hold to sin and still try and say what? They part of God. They believe in God. God is still dealing with them. So in the most high, in his law, it ain't no sin at all. Because the law... It's going to diminish. It's going to put out any sin that we may have. Go ahead. But, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. But now, if we walk in the light, in the law, in the spirit of God, the same way Christ walked. Go ahead. We have fellowship. We have what? Fellowship. We got fellowship. We got friendship. Go ahead. One with another. One with another. So we got to have fellowship. It's impossible to serve the Lord our God alone. Because just like the example of the apostles, those 12 different uh, gifts, they was able to use to help one another to make it, to survive. So that's what you need, sis. Along with that, we got sisters' classes. Come join. Come continue to learn and continue to help with those faults that you overcome. Because we all got faults that we're trying to get better. And it's taking so long to get rid of because we're trying to man up and do it ourselves. But that ain't how the Father works. He said, I've given you brothers and sisters to help the fellowship. Go ahead. And the blood of Christ. And then the blood of Christ, the life that Christ lived. It's not just Christ dying on a cross. Because what led up to Christ shedding his blood? The life he lived. The keeping of the commandments. The walking in the word of his Father led to his bloodshed so when we learn and teach each other and remind each other of the life that christ lived his blood does what cleanses us from all sin it cleanses us from all sin that's why we need the fellowship so come learn you know all right sis all right so we'll go back let's go back to uh second chronicles uh is it uh, Ecclesiastes 8, Woe to Eminence Alone? Or two are better than one? So, because that's a good point. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back to John, 1 John. We'll, we'll go back there. Is that what you're looking for? Two are better than one. What, what we out here doing, we doing is we teaching that the black and Hispanics, we are the Israelites. And as being the Israelites, we got a responsibility. You get first, you got that? So you get first. First John, uh, or St. John 5 and 39. As being the Israelites, this is what we have to do in order to make it, in order to see something better than the life that we have now. In order to see true prosperity and true power and rulership. Because the Israelites are going to rule the earth. The Europeans, just like every other kingdom that enslaved the Israelites has failed, this kingdom is going to fall too. And the Israelites are going to be set up as the kings and queens of the earth under the power and rulership 
of the Christ. So this is St. John chapter 5 and 39. Knowing that we the Israelites, this is what we have to do. Go ahead. Search the scriptures. We got to search the scriptures. We got to take time out to take the Bible off the mantle, take it out of the back window, trying to look righteous and appear righteous and actually be righteous and set yourself on a path of becoming righteous by searching the scriptures. Because when we search the scriptures, the Most High being righteous and sees what we're doing, he's going to reprove our minds and reprove our actions by the things that we read. The Most High is going to show us his laws and show us the life that we shouldn't be living. That's why we got to search the scriptures. Go ahead. For in them you think you have eternal life. Because in the scriptures is how we get eternal life through, because we're going to learn. We're going to learn about the life of Christ, and we're going to learn how Christ kept the commandments of the Father, and how Christ was able to live a life without sin by searching the scriptures. And every time we run into a speed bump, or every time we get in temptation, we go right back to the scriptures, which is full of laws, statutes, and commandments, and an example. The ultimate example that Christ left us on how to be obedient to the Father. So we got to search the scriptures as being Israelites, because in them we have eternal life. But now, what does searching the scriptures entail? Because now as we start to read, the Most High is going to show us something else. Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So, uh, start at verse 8. Verse 7. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. So now this is King Solomon and in the, all his wisdom that the Most High gave him that he learned through the keeping of the commandments of his father David. He said he saw a vanity that was under the sun. And what is the vanity that a lot of our people, they walk in? Solomon is going to tell you. Go ahead. There is one alone. There is one that's alone. That is a vanity. That is a lie. That is falsehood. Trying to walk in this life and serve your God alone. That is vanity. Go ahead. And there is not a second. Yea, they have a neighbor child, nor brother Yet there is no end to his labor. Right, so this person has no help. And they have no end to their labor because they laboring and laboring and laboring. Eventually they're going to wear away because they have no help. They have no other source of strength to fall back on. So it's a vanity by walking in this walk, in this life of Christ, of keeping in the commandments, trying to do it by yourself. Go ahead. Neither his eyes satisfied with riches, neither saith he with whom I do labor and bravely, more, bravely more my soul of goods. This is also vanity. Ye it is a sore travail. Okay. Two is better than one. So now he gets to the point and he say now we should understand that two are better than one. So in this walk and learning and studying now we got to understand that two are better than one. So when we study, now we got to have a teacher. Now we got to have somebody to answer those questions that we have instead of just leaving it to our mind. Because when we only deal with our mind, we will let our mind do what it has done to every other man and woman on the face of the earth that's deceived them. Because when you, have, when you don't have another set of eyes on what you read, then you'll get complacent. Right. Or you'll take what you see fit, which be something wrong, and do away with the thing is right. So we have to let two be better than one because that other mind, that other person, is going to stir us into what the Most High really wants. And not allow us to be self-righteous. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. So, we'll, uh, so with that, we're going to get Matthew 26. So on this path, we got to make sure that we come search the scriptures. And then we got to allow teachers to teach us, thus says the Lord. And then we got to follow this example that the Christ tell us to read everywhere the gospel is preached. Matthew 26 and 6. Now when Yahweh's side was in the Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, there came unto him a woman having a box of, having a box of alabaster 
having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and pour it on his head. And he said at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had in the nation saying, to whom purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much, but given it to the poor. When Yahawashai understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured the, this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, where whosoever this gospel shall be preached, in whom this in, whole, in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. You see that? So Christ said, wherever the gospel is preached, then he said, this memorial, make mention of this sister Mary, Mary Magdalene. The woman that a lot of our people, when they hear that, automatically think she was a whore. But and whatever, but the scriptures say Christ rebuked seven spirits out of her. And in those seven spirits, when she humbled herself to the Christ and sought the Christ for repentance, Christ said, make mention of this sister because she set an example of us on how to humble ourselves, how to break our spirit, and heard of Christ and his preaching and repent. So with that, we like to say shalom. Shalom. Shalom Israel, Most High Christ bless. Hope everybody having a peaceful Sabbath. I pray and hope everybody is uh, remembering the Sabbath to keep it holy. So we should not be buying and selling, cooking and cleaning, doing laborious work, but we should be somewhere resting. And uh, if you don't have any place to fellowship, then you should actually be on the live, watching classes, listening to the precepts, getting admonished, getting some type of direction and inspiration. We should not be partial in our ways. We should not be uh, keeping some com keeping some commandments. Let's just do with the Sabbath. We should not be just doing certain things, doing some things on doing doing some things. Hold up for a second. Hey, 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 Eli, what are you doing? Shut up. We should not be doing certain th some something things on the Sabbath, but then listen to classes too. We should be we should set this. Come totally aside for the most high. You got six days to do all of that stuff. Today, you should not just get bored to where I can't, you know, you got to deal with the scriptures all day. That's how it is. Deal with the scriptures all day on the Sabbath day. All right. So with that, I'm, I'm going to say peace and blessing, strength and honor, Israel. And uh, the General Assembly will be back live in the sanctuary with the rest of the body. In about an hour and a half. So God will it. We'll be starting on time. Y'all will it. How some of y'all said. We're talking about the most high. All right. We'll be on time. Most high will it. Somebody smile laughing like, yeah. But, yeah. So y'all jump in, all right? All right. What's up, uh, Yare? Uh, Shalom.